Hello and welcome to News Pulse, your prime time English news bulletin. I'm Esther. These are the headlines. The 22nd Hornbill Festival 2021 will be held this year along with hosting of the International Tourism Mart for the first time in Kisama Heritage Village following all necessary SOPs issued by the government. This was announced today by Kehovi Yeptomi, Advisor Tourism, Art and Culture at the coordination meeting for Hornbill Festival 2021 with Tribal Hohos in Kohima. Meghalaya Chief Minister Mukul Sangma and about a dozen other Congress legislators from the Northeastern Hill State are likely to switch over to the Trinamool Congress very soon. The Union Ministry of Home Affairs on Friday issued a notification extending the disturbed area tag under the Armed Forces Special Powers Act for three districts of Tirap. Changlang and Longding in Arunachal Pradesh bordering Assam. Now for the news in details. In these unprecedented times, a group of NRIs from across the globe have come together to help India in initiating Medical Oxygen for All or MOFA. Formed by a group of friends to address oxygen deficiency in India, the group that constitute of 20 to 25 volunteers from Australia, England, New Zealand and others have also touched down in Mon district of Nagaland where the NGO has donated an ambulance to the district. MOFA is striving to help support the health infrastructure in far-flung areas and continue to do so in the Northeast, especially Mon District, where it is the first to receive the ambulance in the Northeast. To date, MOFA has raised more than 6 crore rupees, delivered over 800 plus oxygen concentrators in over 60 districts and now intends to provide emergency response services to the remotest districts in India. We have one of the founding members of MOFA, Dhruv Sogani, over the phone to let us know more about MOFA a bit. Hello, Dhruv. Hello. Hi, Dhruv. Uh, thanks for speaking to Hornbill TV. Thank you uh, for also, having me here. Right. And also thank you for, you know, the donation that MOFA has done to Mon District. Uh, coming straight to the question, why Mon? <laughs> so this was actually, you know, we, we understand that the Northeast and various parts uh, of the Northeast are very far flung. And as an initiative from MOFA, we decided to uh, not look at the mainstream places because they do get a lot of support from other aspects, mm -hmm. but look at these places which are which don't have the infrastructure which is which is needed, mm -hmm. and uh, and hence you know Mon came into picture because we were in touch with the DC here, Mr. Thawasilan, who was very forthcoming and discussed things with us, and he expressed the interest and the need that is that exists in this district, and we had common friends. So, so we came to know about him and we came to speak to him and that's how Moon came into picture. So this actually happened uh, during the COVID second wave time in May and that's when we first spoke and uh, as an initial initiative we sent uh, 20 concentrators to Moon and then the conversation continued to where it has reached today that we have donated an ambulance. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, how uh, has this experience been in Mon and uh, how do you identify, apart from it being far flung, how, what other criteria are there for MOFA to identify these places? Certainly. So, of course, uh, apart from being one of the remotest places, we also have the current health infrastructure condition in place that is there a need? We also try and understand the population and the demographics of that area we also try and understand that how willing and how proactive the administration and the health department other people are, that even if we send across something, will that be utilized properly? Do they have enough manpower? Do they, do they have the willingness? Mm -hmm. So with a combination of these factors, we, uh, we decided about uh, Moon and, uh, and, and some other districts also. Okay. 
All right. And uh, give us a little history about MOFA, will you? Uh, I mean, apart from, you know, all friends coming together, uh, especially this initiative of medical oxygen for all, can you please give us a bit of your history? Of course. You know, in these in the hard times that, that the entire country was being hit in the month of April and in May, mm -hmm. uh, we were also feeling extremely miserable. And there were people not just in India, our friends, but people in Australia and England. And uh, they were feeling all the more helpless okay. that they are not here and can't right. do much. So we were discussing and we thought, let's let's take certain things in our hand and try and do our own contribution as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So we started with a very small thought that let's try and raise around 50 lakh rupees from donations uh, from different individuals. So okay. we started a crowdfunding campaign mm -hmm. and that's how we started. But we were able to reach to one crore within a period of three days. So we were quite wow. surprised. Uh, okay. People were very, very uh, helpful and generous in their contributions. And then we thought that if we've reached one crore, we can take it forward. And we started speaking to corporates, to, to IT companies in India, in Australia, mm -hmm. and a lot of the tech entrepreneurs also came together and helped us to where we have reached right now. So we okay. have almost raised more than 12 crores sum of money. Oh, um, and right. within which we've been able to send concentrators, bypass machines, and other medical equipment. And now we are attempting to send uh, really critical life-saving ambulances mm -hmm. uh, which were to places which, of course, don't have them properly and, uh, and, and continue in this space. Okay. So what is next? Uh, which di district or which state is next for MOFA to hit? So we, the next ambulance will be sent to Taminglong in Manipur. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and probably uh, to other places in Nagaland also very soon. All right. So uh, we're expecting Mofa back in Nagaland after maybe a while? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So right. I was fortunate enough to be present here personally. And it was, an, uh, it, was an, it was a great experience. Yes. Uh, people were very welcoming and they, they really uh, they were hospitable to have us here. Okay. So I think after this experience, I would definitely go back and try and work more for, the, for, for Mon District and other places in Nagaland as well. Okay. What was the uh, most, uh, you know, that, that stood out for you uh, in Mon? What stood out exactly for you in Mon? I mean, when you were there, this, you know, for this uh, donation, Sure. Uh, two things. One, the landscape. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, wherever we stand, we can see the mountains all around us. Mm -hmm. So that stood very differently. And the culture. So I could see that there are different tribes. Of course, Mon especially has the cognacs, but there were other tribes also right. and people who were around here mm -hmm. and their interactions and their different cultures. And, um, and and what they were telling me about their backgrounds and what they're doing right now, as well as the uh, the civil societies, right. the societies how they uh, act together and they're still an active, uh, they, they still have active involvement in act in these activities that are going on for the district and for the state. That was very interesting. It is not left over to just the government bodies, but the civil societies play an active role, and we are fortunate to have. Um, uh, the KU and the other student unions and the women central organizations also participate in the event today mm -hmm. when we were handing over the ambulance to the team, apart from the medical and the other administrative bodies. All right. Thank you so much, Dhruv, and thanks to MOFA for this donation. Uh, hope to hear and have you on, on Hornbill again soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for speaking to me. Nice. And uh, have a good day. Thank yes, you. Thank you. The features of the ambulance include auto loader stretcher and trolley scoop stretcher for extreme trauma cases, spine board model for patients needing stabilization, support driver and a patient cabin partition, sitting space sufficient to accommodate four to five persons, air conditioning system for patient cabin and GPS enabled. The ambulance was dedicated by Reverend Paiwang Konyak and the program was attended by Joint Director DC Mon. SP Mon Civil Societies, KBBB, Medical Department and Administrative Offices. 
In other news, the 22nd Hornville Festival 2021 will be held this year along with hosting of the International Tourism Mart ITM for the first time in Kisama Heritage Village following all necessary SOPs issued by the government. This was announced today by Kehovi Yepthomi, Advisor Tourism, Art and Culture at the coordination meeting for Hornbill Festival 2021 with tribal hohos in the Conference Hall Directorate of Tourism. He said that due to the pandemic, the festival could not be held physically last year. Since its inception in 2000, the festival has been very successful and the state has gained recognition while also being recognized globally all thanks to the cooperation of the people from all sections of society. Report. Till 2019, there were more than 3 lakh tourists visiting the state and the entrepreneurs have earned more than 75 crores. It is good to be recognized internationally and promote our people and we are fortunate to be blessed with a beautiful landscape, uniqueness and a lot of potential, he said. Here we are going to celebrate all the festivals. Till 2019, the Ramadan celebration brought to my country is even I say, after the celebration we used to survey, we used to take a uh, uh, report and then uh, with a little money that we invest for the celebration, there is a hard to about uh, till uh, 2019 to more than three lakhs tourists I get now, I'm not going to get this day. And then the money that entrepreneurs they earn from the I um, mean like a uh, stool or any other source, it was uh, more than, it's, it was nearly 75 crores, uh, more than 75 crores. I mean, this time, Amagani made a whole festival celebrate Google at Hagati, our act of good news of Amagani made a whole festival celebrate Along with this whole festival, we are going to celebrate, we are going to host um, IITM. So it's called International Tourism Mart. The first time we are going to host that one, and this is actually organized by the Minister of Tourism. And Nagalandi, uh, that I'm for the promotion of tourism, the Nordic Free Tourism Promotion Program, promote the program, that we to celebrate for the day. The International Tourism Mart is especially focused on the Northeastern states and every year it will be hosted by all the states in the Northeast on rotation basis. Yeptomi said that this is a good opportunity for the tourism sector and delegations of around 500 are expected from the country and across the world. The Mart will start from 28th to 30th of November and further continue on for the Hornbill Festival with the delegations present. An official from the Tourism Department further informed Hornbill TV that Dimapur will also host the Hornbill International Music Fest like other years and strict vigilance will be kept in order to follow SOPs. The official said that this year not many foreigners are expected but hope to have sufficient tourists from other states. The two-day workshop on acting, directing, scriptwriting and creating your own brand which was conducted with an aim to provide opportunities to the youths concluded today at Musica Alobon School of Music in Dimapur. During the workshop, Director of Information and Public Relations Department Z. Tokishe Sema said that the department along with the nodal departments, the state government is framing a film po policy to promote films in the state. More than 40 youths participated in the two-day free film acting workshop sponsored by the DIPR, Government of Nagaland. The organizers handed over certificates to all the participants of the workshop. They write in very detailed uh, manner, like this had happened, this had, like it is all past tense, okay. But here in a script, in, a, in our story, it has to be present. Whatever terms I am using, na, this is only used everywhere. Whether it is Hollywood, Bollywood, everywhere. So, one-liner, this is also a technical term in script writing. My name is Konai Shongdok and I am currently pursuing Masters of Science in Nagaland University. And it has been a great experience. Uh, for yes, yesterday and today we have been um, taught by the professionals from Hollywood. I am a scriptwriter for Cinematics team, the uh, production house in Kohima. And in the past two days I have learned so much um, which I couldn't learn in true 
through Google or YouTube and then uh, from the experiences of the professionals and um, more than the knowledge we got uh, I could uh, learn about the interests of the young people as well and in Nagaland um, there's really less scope but then uh, since the government of Nagaland is uh, trying in this platform to help us we're really grateful for it and even in the future i believe they will continue to support us as scriptwriters and there's so much stories to tell so movie is the best platform i believe yes the moment we see the logo even if the brand name is not written we understand okay this is tata no the moment we see T A T A, we know that this is tata the moment we see that mercedes logo even if we can't see the whole vehicle we know that this is Mercedes. The moment we see those four rounds, we know that this is Audi. Right? So this is how the logos are important. So I am Payal Purkayastha, uh, born and brought up here in Dimapur. By profession, I am a lecturer here in SDG in Girls College. But since I have a passion for acting, I'm also here for actually the acting workshop. Uh, and this two days of workshop has been very fruitful. Uh, two years back also fine studios have come up with this vision of having a workshop here and that was also very fruitful so this time also I did not want to miss that opportunity and I'm here. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we learned a lot from professionals who have already achieved a lot in this field and uh, I'm sure the knowledge that we have picked in these two days, uh, you know, we will be able to apply into our craft and you know, that will help us grow. And uh, what we need is just a little bit more opportunity for us. I wish, you know, we also have a full-fledged acting school where we can actually pursue, so that we can think of pursuing this as a career also. So really looking forward to it, that we have an acting school and more such, you know, such workshops from uh, professionals like this keep coming to us. And that will open many avenues for us in this field as well. Uh, this is the best uh, platform, I believe, and then we have uh, best professionals from Mumbai all the way to Nagaland, uh, teaching and grooming our students, which is a very proud moment for, for all of us. Uh, IPR department be the, being the nodal department of the state government in promotion of flames. We are on the job of uh, framing a uh, flame policy for the state of Nagaland and there will include uh, the formation of uh, Nagaland State Film Development Society I think which will be a body consisting of members from the film fraternity like the producers, filmmakers and then production houses. That society will guide and will uh, frame the policies to take forward the uh, promotion of films in our state and I hope the state government will take interest in uh, funding uh, the society and the film production in the state. It's high time that uh, I believe the film medium is the best medium to advertise and promote our state to the outside world. They are talented youths in our state and with proper grooming and channelizing their right direction for uh, film production they'll all come up and i hope in the future naglem will be the hub of the northeast uh, film production center and we hope that uh, it will advance in all the ways so that uh, film productivity and the use are brought up to the level of excellence so from the government side is there any kind of project that we can ca coming up for the one who, who are interested in acting uh, no project as such uh, as of now, but as I said, we'll frame a film policy that will guide us and that will, uh, you know, bring all the film makers and film lovers, production houses together, that will guide and frame the policies to take uh, uh, this uh, production of films in the state forward. A four-day orientation program for the new batch of social science and humanities departments of the Ikfai University, Dimapur, which began on September 27, has concluded today. Delivering the welcome address, Vice Chancellor Dr. Arun Kumar Verma welcomed the chief guests and new students. Dr. Verma said that the Ikfai University focuses on giving better and versatile education to students, thereby contributing to the society. Managing Director, Heritage Publication House, Dr. Lanu Sanglat Sadir, who was the chief guest of the event, urged the teachers and students to build a strong and sound methodology because this is something the Nagas are short of. She also stressed on the importance of youth studying 
their surroundings critically and doing a research on the society. There are people from other countries studying us, but we see very less of our own people studying the Naga society, Sudhir said. She exhorted the university to guide the students well and produce youths who will contribute for the betterment of the society. Let's get some more details on the event from our reporter, Kirkesinho Keo. Today we are here at Iqfa University to at attend an orientation program for the Department of Social Science and Humanities and this orientation program is for the uh, new students who will be coming to Iqfa University. We will get to know more about the orientation program, not just that, but we will also get to know from the Vice Chancellor of Iqfa University what is their aim and objectives when it comes to the university and what they wish to provide to the students. Uh, this orientation program has been conducted in four days, keeping into the account of COVID-19 protocol. This year we have got sufficient number of uh, students. It, it has gone to the two times of the growth of the university in terms of the student base. That's why we wanted to keep 70 to 80 uh, students uh, each day and that we have divided into the four day uh, starting from the first day from the management science, the second day from the computers and library science, third day undergraduate level of uh, humanities and social science and today is the last day of our orientation program uh, where you have seen uh, uh, scientists from the DRDO and uh, scientists from the US also was there as, uh, as uh, to bless the occasion. Okay. So, so what does this ICFA University aim to provide to the students? ICFA University aims to provide a students with a professional capability, competency, so that they can go to any industry and government services for their employment as well as they should be so trained in different domains so that they can start their own entrepreneurship to give the employment in the Nagaland state. So in today's orientation program, uh, the chief guest stressed on the importance of working hard and she also urged the students to work hard and contribute to the society in the future. I am reporter Kia Christine Yukewa with Kema President C.A. Villiers for Hornville TV. That's all for News Pulse. I'm Esther. Keep watching Hornville TV.